Hey guys, so I am so excited to do a makeup transformation today of something with a creepy twist of... <laughs> Inspired by the Disney movie Cinderella. I'm specifically going to do the evil stepmother from the traditional original Cinderella. You know, the one with the piercing green eyes and the gorgeous burgundy and purple outfit. And not just her, but her with the creepy twist. This is gonna be another two-part makeup series where I do a beauty, just straight up makeup of the character and then I put my own little creepy twist on it. Like what if the evil stepmother was trampled by Cinderella's horses from her carriage with horseshoe stomp footprints all over her face and some blood, it will be good. We will see if we could do it. So let's see how this turns out. First, I'm gonna put my hair, of course, in a wig cap because I'm definitely gonna need a wig later. My hair does not reach higher than the heavens like the evil stepmother does in Cinderella. Put some bobby pins in there to make sure it's secure on your head because the wig is going to be big and beautiful. And by beautiful, I mean semi-rat's nest that looks like a vampire bouffant. Now, it is time to do the disappearing act on our eyebrows with a glue stick. The Elmer's Purple Glue is great if you have darker eyebrow hairs like I do. I usually do one layer of glue, let it dry, get tacky, then powder down with a huge, giant powder puff. These are like my favorite because they remind me of, you know, the movies where the Disney princesses powder their face and all the cute little cartoons. But you're gonna do one, two, maybe even three or four layers of this glue and powder. Just make sure each layer is completely dry before you move on to the other one. And once your eyebrows are completely flat and they'll be vanished once you put makeup on it, we are gonna move on to an old age makeup. I'm getting a taupe color and making sure I really exaggerate all my fine lines and bags under my eyes and laugh lines and wrinkles. You wanna make frowny faces and then move on to a highlight color. A highlight color is basically just a shade or two lighter than your regular skin, and it's gonna bring out those bags and shadows that we put on our face that's gonna make you look at least 10 years older than you are. It gets kind of creepy when you start looking like your grandmother or grandfather, but that means you're just doing this step right. You really want to blend these out too to make it look natural. You can keep them harsh if you're gonna do the next step that we are going to accomplish in this video, which is liquid latex stipple. Now this is where you stretch your skin, stipple on some liquid latex with a disposable makeup sponge. If you are allergic to liquid latex, I would Google other options. I don't know if there's many options to do old age makeup that is comparable to liquid latex, but this is going to be really tough on your skin because you stretch it with your fingers, let that dry with the hair dryer, which really, really helps with this, and powder it down and let it go, and it gives these amazing wrinkled effects on your face. In all the areas where you would have wrinkles you stretch, like where you would have crow's feet near your eyes and the middle of your eyebrows. And my very favorite, most awkward part to do, the old age stipple effect is in your mouth because you have to get a huge spoon and it looks like you're just like eat way too much food and you just won't get the silverware out of your mouth to pile in more food. I, you know I'm all about that life, but this just looks so awkward. But you're just doing the same thing on your mouth as well. And once you're done with all that stippling old age effects and you think you look old enough, we're gonna move on to some prosthetics. So we're gonna put some top card down by the brand Telesis. This is gonna make it easier to take the appliance off. It's good for sensitive skin. We're not only gonna do one prosthetic, but two. We're trying to make this character, even though she's a cartoon, the original Cinderella, as realistic as possible, meaning I have to change my face shape. And then we're just gonna lay down some prose down the center of our nose and on that appliance. I like to work from the center of my face and move out when it comes to prosthetic makeup because it's just easier when you're layering on products and prosthetics to overlap each other, even though these ones don't overlap whatsoever. But that's why I waited to do the stippling old age before this because you have to move your face so much when you're doing stippling old age and you don't wanna move it when you're putting down prosthetics. Do you get my drift? You don't want these to fall off. Making sure all those edges are down and gluing the rest of it on the outer parts of the prosthetic. And now I'm just doing the same steps with that chin. The chin is so much easier to put on than your nose because the nose prosthetic has to align to your nostrils and fit your nose a lot better. And chins I feel like could fit on almost anyone. 
Now you want to work on your edges. I'm just getting some liquid latex and stippling it with a red stipple sponge, making sure my edges of the foam prosthetic transitions very nicely into my own skin as best to my ability. You want to look like it's a part of your face and not just a foreign object you just hot glued on your face, girl. You don't want this to look like you built a house with duct tape. You want to look like this house is meant to be there, that you used real nails and wood. That was the weirdest, most manly comparison I've ever made. Having a hair dryer, I cannot express how useful it is when doing special effects makeup with prosthetics. And then I'm gonna powder my whole prosthetic face parts down with some translucent powder. And then I'm gonna move on to makeup. On the prosthetic, you have to use different makeup on prosthetics than your actual face. So you're gonna get packs or some sort of makeup that's good for foam prosthetics, maybe some rubber mask grease paint layered with some Prosade. It's really hard to get a paint that's good for prosthetics that will match your skin tone or whatever foundation you're gonna use. So you're gonna make sure that makeup goes over the edges and onto your actual skin so when you put on foundation on the rest of your face, it will be easier to color match it. Speaking of color matching and foundation, I'm gonna get one of my all-time favorite foundations to use next to this makeup, which is the CoverGirl Outlast 3-in-1 Stay Fabulous Foundation. That's a mouthful, but I love this foundation. Once your foundation's on, you're gonna get some concealer to conceal those brows because they're still peeping through the foundation. You want it to look like your eyebrows were just singed off your face, as weird as that sounds. Now, I feel like I lost some of those fine line and wrinkles that I painted on my face before I stippled it and put foundation on. So I'm gonna go back with a taupe color and redo and touch up those wrinkles and awesome creases and crevices. Now I'm just getting a blush color and blushing my cheeks because even evil women blush and have cute perky cheeks. Now I'm just getting some powder contour. This contour and blush palette from Lunatic Cosmetics Labs, one of my all-time favorites. You want your cheeks to look hollow and sunken in. You want your face slimmer, well mine especially because I have a big round red tomato face. And it'll just make it look better with that very angular chin. Now it is time to do those brows. I'm getting a black eyeliner pencil and doing tiny hairs of like these huge arched brows where they're not huge, they're actually very thin and they remind me of like wings of seagulls from very far off in the distance that we drew as children in art class. Sometimes you could switch over to a brown color to make them more natural, but they're not natural, whatever. They just look very evil and thin. Very evil and thin like the bullies from high school who looked perfect and made fun of kids that they were fat, that evil and thin. Now it's time to shadow in those eyes. I am getting my N35 Neutrals palette from Morphe. I'm using this plum color and a gray tone and layering that, caking it on our eyes, girl. We are making sure it's almost like a cut crease. You don't want it to blend really nicely into the skin. I know I rarely do that, but this isn't like a beautiful beauty makeup for a beautiful everyday natural woman look. This is a creepy, evil woman from a Disney movie who's very harsh and cold-hearted. So we want our eye makeup to look the same, very dark, very purple, very cut crease-like. It's gonna give her like attitude. And you want to make sure you put that on your lower lash line as well with a very thin angle brush. Now it is time to curl our eyelashes and put some mascara on because even the evil stepmom has some lashes, not much, but a little bit of lash. So we don't have to put crazy lashes on, just curl and put some mascara on it. Make sure you don't forget the bottom lashes because I always used to do that. So not only do we paint our face, but we need to paint the lips. They're gonna be not one, but two different colors. I'm using this L'Oreal Drugstore Berry color. And then on the top, I am using a liquid lipstick from Ofra. I'll make sure to leave the names of both of those down below in the description box. But her lips in the movie have definitely a two-tone where the top's darker than the bottom. And make sure your bottom lip is bigger than the top one. And once you're done with your face makeup part of the evil stepmother from Cinderella, we're gonna move on to her outfit. I could not find this gorgeous dress that I would actually wanna wear in real life, so I decided to paint it on my body. I'm gonna get some purple aqua paint to start. As you can see here, I hate purple aqua paint because for some reason, it always comes out patchy. Don't know why this color comes out like that, but it's gonna give us that high-necked collar part of the dress, and you want to leave a little room like a half circle where we're gonna put the jewel on her whole outfit later. Not actually physically put it on, but paint it on, you know what I mean? And then we're just getting a turquoise body paint and painting on that jewel. Hair dryers still really help in this process. 
Now moving on to the red burgundy part of her dress that's so gorgeous. I'm gonna get some red aqua paint and paint that all over the rest of my shoulders and body that I made sure I didn't paint before. This red aqua paint is going to be really hard to take off and it's almost like she drenched the blood of thy enemies in her shoulders. Like everyone the evil stepmom did not like. I know that sounds really creepy. Now just getting black aqua paint with a very thin paintbrush and doing some details of edge work where the costume has folds in it, a break from the different parts of her outfit, and definitely the ruffled collar part of her dress that I love so much. Now the evil stepmom's dress isn't red, it's actually burgundy. So I'm gonna get this burgundy eyeshadow that's semi-matte. You wanna get the most matte, most pigmented eyeshadow of burgundy you could find that's almost like a cranberry. This is from a Violet Voss eyeshadow palette and I'm just gonna buff that in all over that red paint to make it look more like a burgundy dress because unfortunately I didn't have burgundy colored body paint so I'm gonna make my own by layering makeup on top of each other. Make sure to really buff it in so that it's very pigmented and it's not patchy. Then I'm gonna get some matte black eyeshadow. This is Corrupt by Makeup Geek. Doesn't matter what brand of eyeshadow you get as long as it's black and matte. As pitch black as the evil stepmother's soul. And you're gonna buff that in those shoulder crevices, I call them, of the dress. And on the ruffles of the collar of her neck to make it look more like a realistic outfit. And not like something weird you painted on your body for fun. Getting this beautiful eyeshadow color that reminds me of a jade green peacock and putting that on the jewel on the middle of the outfit. And then getting some yellow cream paint and doing the outer frame of that. And then gold cream paint on top of that to make it look like a gold frame that's picturesque around this jewel. Reference pictures are so key to this outfit and this whole makeup. Getting that aqua black paint with a thin brush again and making sure you do more detail, especially on your lips. You're gonna make your lips look kinda cartoony with this black aqua paint. Getting a alcohol palette, if you do not have this, you can just use cream paint very lightly, but I'm gonna use this to do old age spots to make her look really old and more realistic on this evil stepmother's face. If you don't know what old age spots are, what they look like, you could just Google it. It's kinda like freckles, but bigger. Doing more contouring on the face because I feel like it needed it. And then I'm gonna get this giant wig that I got from Amazon and I spray painted it because it was originally just black and white streaks. But I spray painted to make it look a little gray tone. And this wig came with really weird curls in the back so I just clipped those up. And then I got these cute little green earrings that I actually made myself so proud. If you didn't know, they're made out of green pipe cleaners, hot glue, and just clip-on earring studs. I don't have my ears pierced. These are just scar marks if you ever see my ears pierced. And you could be completely done with this makeup, but the evil stepmother from Cinderella has some bright green eyes. So I put some bright green contact lenses in that are like giant circle lenses. They just give so much more expression and girl, they match your earrings. And once you're done fiddling with your eyes, you can get that black eyeliner pencil that you use on your eyebrows, but use it to make a widow's peak. It's harder to make it look like it belongs with this wig, but I couldn't skip out on this because the evil stepmother definitely has a huge widow's peak. And I want to be as true to the Disney Cinderella as I can. And once you're done painting on those widow peak hairs, you are completely done with this evil stepmother from Disney Cinderella. She definitely looks old and evil and very like high and mighty, almost like she's a queen. And as you know, we are not completely done with that. If you want to stick around to see her turn bloody and even more scary, we are going to make it look like she got trampled by Cinderella's horses from her carriage. So I just got this nude lip pencil and started drawing on horseshoe marks on my face. Once you have the horseshoe mark down, I'm gonna get some blood tone alcohol paints. If you don't have an alcohol palette, because honestly it kind of stings and you don't want to get it too soaked into the foam prosthetics, you could definitely use cream paints for this. But this is gonna make it look even more bloody and realistic of all the horseshoe marks on her face. You could do these horseshoe marks anywhere you want on the face. I would suggest on a larger area like the cheek, just so you can see detail more. Look up pictures of horseshoe marks in the ground and then replicate that on the face because I couldn't find any pretty horseshoe marks on actual face pictures. It was just all busted faces and really scary. So I'm going to do some red irritation with the orange stipple sponge with that alcohol paint. 
because if you ever injure the skin, it leaves like a red rash mark around it because the skin's so irritated from whatever cut or wound you have on it. I study a lot of creepy wounds. You want to get some darker blacks and blue tones around that to darken it around that horseshoe mark. You can get some blue tone mixed with reds on that orange stipple sponge from the alcohol palette and make sure your face also looks bruised in certain parts like under the eye maybe or on the nose like she was really roughed up. And I'm doing another horseshoe mark on my forehead. Like I said, you want to get some darker colors to really make it look like distinct real injuries of horseshoe marks. And then it wouldn't be a creepy twist without some fake blood. You can make your own fake blood with corn syrup and red food dye, but I just have this blood tone palette thing that's liquidy, almost looks like real blood. I'm having mine coming from my mouth and my nose and I'm doing scrapes with a smaller fan brush or toothbrush with the fake blood all over the face and do some splatter marks of fake blood. And then I'm just darkening the area of the hoof stamp where the horse smashed his foot into my face with some more alcohol paints. And then I'm getting some fake clean dirt. Yes, that's the real thing. I'm getting fake dirt to put on my face because you know those horses have not only been stomping on my face but on actual dirt. And once you're done dirting up and making your face bloody, you're completely finished with this creepy twisted part of the evil stepmother from Cinderella when she was trampled by the horses from Cinderella's horse-drawn carriage. It's so weird to see evil people look terrified. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I had so much fun doing it. I think it came out pretty cool. I can't wait to try out more makeups with more prosthetics for you guys. But now it is time to take this off. It is always so difficult for me to take off prosthetics. I think it is for everyone. Please use isopropyl Miristate and a lot of it to take off these foam prosthetics or any prosthetics so you won't rip your skin up. And please, 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 if you did the step of the stipple old age of liquid latex, do not just rip it off your face because I didn't put top guard there and I have very sensitive skin, but it really rashed up my face. I mean, it'll go away in a couple of days, but it does burn. It's like a sunburn on your face almost. I hope I'm not becoming allergic to liquid latex. That would not be fun for both of us. This red body paint took so long to take off in multiple showers. And again, all the products I use in this video will be listed down below in the description box. If you guys do any of my makeups from any of these videos, please post it on Instagram and tag me, hashtag catsketch, so that I can see it and comment it and like it and share it. I love you guys so much and for all your support and inspiration to make these videos, I cannot wait to make more. You guys could definitely subscribe and like this video to see more. And I love you all. I'll definitely see you soon in another creepy video. Maybe some cute ones ahead too. See you soon. Gotta go shower. Bye.